Shalom, this is Levi Shore. Welcome back to Sweet Good Torah. We have Rabbi Mordechai Darwish of the Gates of Mordechai, where you're learning. We're going to know God's plan. We're learning the Ram Chal, Rabbi Chaim Moshe Lizados Das Tavunos. And we're going to jump right in. So to completely the ultimate revelation of God's oneness requires that evil be destroyed. Wouldn't that be nice? Get rid of evil in the world. That would be nice. So we're going to start out, let's see, when we start out and the rabbi is going to teach, what we have described so far is not the final stage in the revelation of God's oneness. In the end, God's perfection will cause all deficiency and evil to disappear completely. The world will remain in a state of perfection since only God's absolute good will prevail. Then God's oneness will be experienced as a tangible reality. Sounds yeah, they kind of, I kind of see it as like the Super Bowl when the confetti comes down. <laughs> no more challenge. It's just time to enjoy the reward. Yeah. Yeah, you work hard all season. You win the championship. You win the Super Bowl, and then you get the party. You get the champagne and the and the celebration and, and everything. So, so Ram Kali says, consider the consequence of this. The inevitable revelation of God's perfection means that although man was created imperfect and deficient, this state of being will not last forever. It is just a temporary state that must eventually be corrected. However, there are many ways this can come about. So let me explain all this in more depth. The present and perfect state of the world is caused solely by the concealment of God's presence. God did not want to cause his presence to illuminate the world right away, making it perfect from the very beginning. Instead, he hid his presence and made the world imperfect. This is based on the fact that the light of God's presence certainly brings life and perfection. So this, we're talking on a deep Kabbalistic level. Or I think we're talking about the Or Ein Sof, the infinite light. And its concealment is the source of all evil. So later we will discuss this concept in more detail. However, the ultimate purpose is not for God's presence to remain hidden. Rather, the purpose is for his presence to be become revealed at a later stage thereby removing all evil from the world. This evil had been caused exclusively by the concealment of his presence. God therefore created a precise system in order to bring about the revelation of his presence and the hidden light of his goodness. Yeah, that precise system is the 6,000 years, and every day and every moment is a rectification and a bringing of more light into the world. And uh, revealing that oneness. And uh, we have a special part to partake in in doing so. Yeah. No, and I think it's very confusing right now. We're, we're really in the darkness before the dawn, right before the, you know, the days of Mashiach. So we see the, do we see the darkness. It, I don't want to get into the argument right now, but it, but it appears that evil is yeah. winning right now. But, but the only purpose of evil is to be destroyed. Like the purpose of the world is to be filled with Hashem's yeah. good, you know. So like all these people, yeah, all these corrupt people, that's like, that's not the purpose of the world. That's just like, you know, what has to be defeated right now. The evil inside, you know, the evil they're choosing. So one of the ways this revelation can come about is through the actions of man himself, namely the fulfillment of the mitzvos, the laws of the Torah and the teachings that God gave us in his true Torah, the Torah Emes, through which a person merits eternal life. This is because the reward for fulfilling these mitzvos is the spiritual light they give rise to. So this is the light of God's presence, which was hidden from man when he was first created. The concealment of this light from man meant that he would now have a very demanding task. His negative drives would rule over him, making him subject to numerous deficiencies and distancing him from the source of life. However, the performance of the mitzvos causes God's hidden light to shine upon him. By carrying out all the mitzvos required of him, he perfects himself and fills himself with the light of eternal life. Yeah, so I think he's talking about this more, a little bit more than uh, just evil people. It's talking about like the evil inside a person, like the, yeah. his bodily tendencies, bodily tendencies, you know, and his drive towards the material. That's supposed to be illuminated and the person's supposed to be like an angel. Not supposed to be like yeah. you know a, a, a 
And so, and so, you know, step by step, the crack, every commandment illuminates his soul and his body, and it's striving towards the perfection where everything will be illuminated. Right. No, and it's, and it's, you know, it's, everyone has Bechira, everyone has free will, everyone inside them has a Yetzahara, an evil impulse, and a Yetzirah Tov, a good impulse. And the Torah, through learning Torah and doing the mitzvot, that leads us to strengthen the Yetzirah Tov and teaches us how to fight against the Yetzahara. So everyone, right, everyone can be good, everyone can earn this eternal life, but we have to follow the plan, right, knowing God's plan. So the plan, right, is the, the Torah and the mitzvot. So then the Ram Chal is going to continue. He's going to say, even if man does not choose to follow God's mitzvot and perfect himself, God's oneness will nonetheless be revealed. He will not conceal his light from the world forever. But in that case, he will rule over the sinners with unbridled wrath. They will have to endure their punishment until their sins are completely wiped out or until their coarse hearts are humbled in teshuva and they are allowed to live. Furthermore, since God concealed his presence only in order to reveal his glory at a later date and bring us back to him, even the free choice we now have will not exist forever. This situation where our actions determine whether God gives good or bad to the world is based on the preponderance of our actions and will not last forever. God has decided on the time period necessary for the, the, the tikkun, the rectification of all the souls that he created. And some of them will achieve this through their own righteousness and others through sincere teshuva, yet others through the sufferings they will have to endure. So the time limit God made is, like you said, 6,000 years. And our, as our chachamim, our sages, have stated in the Talmud, in Rosh Hashanah and Sanhedrin, if you want to look it up, it's Rosh Hashanah 31a, Sanhedrin 97a. So after that, God will transform the whole world, and humans will become like purely spiritual beings rather than like donkeys. They will be divested of the gross physicality they now possess, of, it, of its negative consequences, the evil inclination, and its effects. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, as I was saying. It's not. It's not just like the actual of killing, raping, pillaging, and, and, and that. It's just, it's just every person on their individual level, and humanity as a whole will be more in line. And there's there's really three ways to do that. You can either do it through the commandments, or through repentance of not fulfilling the commandments, or through suffering. So a person really has you know one of three um, <laughs> lines of. Uh, <laughs> of a fire where they're going to, you know, they, they three paths, whichever one they want to take. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like one, uh, one over the other. It yeah. could be a combination of the three. Yeah. No, I think for the average person, right. It's more of a combination of all, you know, of all at times, at times we act like Siddiquim at times we act very good. And times, unfortunately we, we, we were seduced. We make mistakes. We do Teshuva, we return and, and the concert Sham, but there's times we're kind of stubborn, you know, and we, uh, we get the, you know, we get the whip a little bit. We get the punishment. We get the suffering. You know, the illness, financial troubles. You know, marital troubles. The whole, the whole gamut. All right. So here, here he's going to go on. It's very interesting. He says, so even in Yemotza Mashiach, even in the Messianic era, which is before the end of the six thousand years, the evil inclination will disappear. The Yitzhahara will disappear. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh. And I will cause you to keep my mitzvot. It says in Yechezkel, Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. So thir furthermore, Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, he speaks of the years you will say, I have no desire in them. And the sages tell us that this refers to the messianic era, when there will be no possibility of earning reward or incurring guilt or punishment. The reason for this is clear. When man has been purified of the evil inclination, he will have no choice but to serve God. Therefore, he will not be deserving of praise. Interesting. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, all the all the people who uh, like to cite other prophecies, you know, of destruction and doom of the Jewish people or anything like that, clearly they haven't read this where, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ultimate will be good no matter what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's yeah. kind of, uh, it gives hope, it gives tikva, right? 
Right. No, and it, right. I think, right. It's like this perfect world's coming. Like people can't stop it. Um, people can get great reward, you know, so it, it's interesting. So because unfortunately, like the Torah is so neglected right now and the mitzvahs are so neglected and like out of the 8 billion people all the world, only a handful are participating in it. So the reward is fantastically great right now. But it also shows like Hashem's compassion. Like he really wants everyone to earn this reward. And he's giving many paths like a person can do it. Like it's nice. You can do it the nice, easy, sweet way. If you're learning the Torah, doing the mitzvahs, you know, or unfortunately a person can earn it with suffering, but it's not, it's not for nothing. The suffering's not just, you know, something's happening randomly. There's a purpose to it. It's so people can partake in this eternal life. You know, it's really, if we really understood that, like, you know, it it brings us a lot more comfort. Yeah. I think that's an important point. Cause like people think like, oh, it's just bad luck or, you know, I don't need to do this or maybe I didn't get the right doctor. I didn't get the right lawyer. I didn't get the right Mm -hmm. this or right that. And they drive themselves mad. You know what I mean? Instead of like taking it as part for the court. Yeah. Like that's what's supposed to happen. So yeah. everything that happens to you at all yeah. deserve. No, right. So the, like, yeah. like person has to, the person, the person, that is such a person should live. A person should live like everything that I get, I had it coming to me. Yeah. Instead of like, oh man, woe is to me. <laughs> I am, uh, man, why did this happen? And he goes and kicks rocks and, you know, yeah. Or, or, or like yeah. or like we've been quoting 50 cents you know you know god tailor fit my pain but but he like, tailor fit the pain to give you to give you your personal reward right so it's not just he tailor fit my pain he tailor fit my pain in order to give me my reward you know right yeah, so it's yeah <laughs> uh-huh. and let me just go on a little here so he says However, as part of the as however, as part of the process of the revelation of God's oneness, he allows the world to be swept along by the turbulent events of history for whatever length of time he chooses. At such times, evil prevails in the world. In the end, however, this will lead to the demonstration of God's total mastery over everything. In the meantime, he does not prevent evil from doing everything in its power, even if this brings the world to the abyss of darkness. This is no this in no way means that the world is going to self-destruct. Even at such times, God's power is absolute. He brought everything about. He bears everything while it lasts. He inflicted the wound and he will heal. There is nothing that does not come from God. All of this should provide great strength to the faith, the amuna of the Jewish people, and prevent us from becoming discouraged by the length and terrible bitterness of our present exile. On the contrary, God is the one who allows evil to do everything it possibly can, as I explained. And in the end, the more evil inflicts its burden or suffering upon the world, the greater will be the revelation of God's total oneness and of his absolute and unlimited power over everything that exists. From amidst the very depth of the numerous and terrible travails, God will most assuredly cause the redemption, the Gaula, to spring forth through his awesome power. Right. So all the ups and downs in history, right? All the wars, all the craziness that's happening mm-hmm. in the world is all par for the course. And mm-hmm. and it's it, it has design. And the darker it's going to get, the more illumination it'll be. Yeah. And so, so like when we see darkness, it's not like, oh, my gosh, it's, it, you know, to lose despair. I'd rather understand that it's all you yeah. know, being orchestrated. Yeah. I mean, one, one thing people don't like to talk about a lot. But, I mean, one of the darkest chapters of Jewish history, you know, in the Holocaust, when we were enduring these severe punishments at the hands of, you know, these evil, you know, Amalek, the Nazis, Yamak Shemam, Amalek. But but what the Ramakal is saying is something very incredible. He's saying that even during these darkest times, everything is happening, like everything is under control and everything's been managed. And like each punishment is specifically given and it's given to cleanse the soul you know, so they can receive this great reward. We don't get to see that part right now. That's what's so horrible and terrifying about it all. We only see the suffering and we, you know, it's horrible to see evil, you know, ruling for a while. And we don't, we haven't seen like the end of the movie yet. We haven't seen like, you know, where, you know, the, the villain is killed and, and the hero is rewarded for all, you know, the, the suffering, the obstacles that they had to go through. So people can only see the suffering in the Jewish people in some ways. 
But even during these darkest times, like Hashem is in complete control and everything's very specifically, he's not letting, you know, anything happen. Everything's specifically, you know, happening for a reason. But it's causing hard everything. Right. Yeah. It's causing everything to happen. But it's like, it's like, you know, if you if you think back to like uh, the 90s uh, when uh, the Bills, the Bills were in control in the, in the AFC and they went off and they, they played the, the Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers jumped out to like a 30 point lead, you know, and it, everything looked like bleak, like forget about it. The game is over. And really, that was the, the setup for the greatest comeback in football history. Yeah. Right. And when and the Bills won the game at the end and it was just like it was just amazing to see. It's like it was like there was no way they're going to come back from 35 to three. And they did. And they won the game. Yeah. And it was just it just looked so dark and so bleak. And and really everything got flipped around. Yeah, so right. So I mean, if like if you're if, if yeah, so if you know, if you're a Bills fan watching that game, or you know, or you know, or using that analogy or the Jewish people, right? So when we see like we, no, when we just see these sufferings and these things are happening, like October the seventh, we haven't seen the outcome yet. We haven't seen where this is all heading, and it, you know, it, you know, it may get worse before it gets better. You know, we you know we don't know exactly, but but because we don't see like the end. We, and we don't, and we're not seeing behind the, the curtain either. We're not seeing that the, the the souls that were killed, that those souls are being purified and they're going to you know spiritual realms. But it's interesting because the whole idea is that like Hashem saying, "Look, do it the night." Like, look, what we're we doing in Sefer uh, Devarim, you know, the the book of Deuteronomy, all these parshas, the last few Shabbos, Hashem's constantly talking about the brachas and the clouds, the blessings and the curses. He's like, please follow the Torah, then I can rain down all these blessings and everything good. You're going to have peace. You're going to have plenty. You know, you're going to have. You're going to be rich and you'll be healthy. And it's weird that we don't <laughs> we don't do it. And then he says, if you don't, you know, if you don't do it, you know, I'm going to rain down. You know, unfortunately, the klalas, the curses, and we've seen plenty of these. You know, it's I I don't know what it is like. What it is that we can't just say, let's do it right. You know, let's get the the blessings. Let's bring the bracha down into the world. I don't get our disconnect. We're, we're, we're so lost in Gullis, like we were talking about before. Maybe we're just so lost in exile, and we feel so part of you know the exile. Well, it's a lack of knowledge. If you don't know you're playing the game, you don't yeah. have a game plan. Yeah. You know, even if you like, you know what I mean. First, you got to know you're playing the game. Once you know you're playing the game, you got to have a game plan. You got to have good coaching. You got to have you got to have everything in place to win the championship. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to eat right. You got to sleep right. You got to you got to employ all means. And really, if you pay attention to the Shema, the Shema says you shall love God with all um, your heart, all your soul, and every, everything that happens to you, all your possessions. So everything must be employed into the succession of the plant. And if it's not for any some any other reason, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a vision, whether it's, um, you know, a sidetrack, you know, like you, you need to employ all means to, to reach the goal. Yeah, if you don't you get sidetracked? That's 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 where we're not. We're not employing all the means to to reaching that goal. Right. I feel no. I feel like us. Oh, right. We're playing like the wrong game. Like we um, we're getting so caught up. Like like you know you're saying like we're getting so caught up in everything around us. Like we're getting caught up in the sporting events and the uh, you know the music, you know the popular music and the movies and the politics and all that. We're so caught up in it all. But yet the real, like the real life, like, is this like, like, why is the world, why does Shem create the world? Why is it all here? You know, it's like, so we can have this close relationship with God and we're missing it somewhat. We're so caught up in all the distractions and we think like yeah. the distractions are the game. We think the distractions are the game and we're not playing like the real game that we're here to play, you know? Exactly. It's like a, it's like a champion athlete that goes out and parties at night, and he thinks that's the purpose, right? Yeah. And we, we made we made pleasure seeking the purpose yeah. of life, the avoidance yeah. of any pain. You know, that's the real pleasure, right? And that's yeah. that's that's a, we've become a decadent society, yeah. right? I mean, you're talking about the Western world, right? It's yeah. Become a decadent society that really like you know uh, values any kind of pleasure and disdains any kind of pain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, it's not it's not for nothing. We become the the most obese nation in the in the, in the world. Yeah. 
No, to use to use your analogy, right? You got this all star quarterback, you know, Pro Bowl quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback, and he's on the field. And they're about to do the game winning drive, and instead of starting the drive, he wanders into the stands and he starts buying a beer, and he buys a hot dog, and he buy and he's buying peanuts, and like and he's lost in the stands when he should be there on the field directing the game winning drive, and that's what we're all doing. Like we're lost, we're we're wandering around. So what, like the Ram Khal is telling us, we know God's plan. Like if we understand it clearly, if we really see that the world, the blueprint of the world is just the Torah, the mitzvot, and that helps, and it not only help, does it help us get closer to God, it helps us in our relationships down here on earth too. It's going to help us have better marriages. It's going to help us have, you know, better relations with our parents, with our children, you know, with our grandparents, our friends, right? Because we're not, because we're not doing it clearly, it's all jumbled and it's messing. And that's why all the relationships are so messed up in the world right now. Cause everyone's distracted. No one's like really well, focused on the reality, you know? Yeah. If all the teammates are, are on the same page, yeah. then there's harmony with the teammates. Right. Yeah. You know, when everybody's got their own goal, you know, this guy's trying to get paid and that guy's trying to retire early. And this guy's trying to, you know, just sit on the bench and you know, everybody's trying, this guy's trying to showboat. And, and and that's 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 what happens. You don't have everybody on the same page, and so you you know because there's no vision, there's no goal to strive towards. Then that's that's what happens. You break, you have the breakdown in relationships. It's natural. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's I mean that's where it is today. Um, I don't know. We got we got to keep learning God's plan, and then. So, uh, and Bizrat the Shem, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be living life better. You know, we'll, we'll be in the game. We won't be wandering around. Like, you know, we'll pay attention to the game film. We'll pay attention to who we're playing and who we're playing. And who are, who's our who's our real opponent? Our real opponent's the Yates Sahara. Like, we all have this evil impulse inside us. And if we're not fighting against it, if you don't even know the Yates Sahara is there, we're, we're losing the game. <laughs> like, if we don't know the Yates Sahara is there, if we don't know the tactics of the Yates Sahara, and if we don't know how to fight against the Yates Sahara, without the mitzvahs, we don't have weapons to fight against the Yates Sahara. Without the Torah, we don't have our game plan. And we need that, or we're not going to win. We're not going to win the war. We're not going to win the game. You know? Exactly. Right. That's that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the usual suspects of that movie. Just quote that movie. <laughs> said the greatest the devil ever pulled was to, to, to convince the world he doesn't exist, right? <laughs> yeah all right so that that's it for today everyone you know help us out if you enjoyed it please like share subscribe leave us your comments let us know what you think and uh we hope to see you back again soon on uh sweet and good torah and the gates of mordecai all the best